The new FNA-18 ENF Super Hornet is beginning the second year of its three-year flight test program. We'll bring you an update. And on the C-17 program, a self-directed team is using statistical methods to achieve higher levels of quality and performance. Hello, I'm Donna Race, and this is Flight Times TV. In mid-January, the Navy's newest tactical fighter earned its sea legs. The FNA-18 ENF Super Hornet successfully completed sea trials aboard the USS Stennis. Carrier suitability tests represented a critical milestone in the airplane's three-year test program, being conducted here at Patuxent River Naval Air Station in Maryland. About 430 people, 300 of them from McDonnell Douglas are working here along with the Navy and representatives from Northrop Grumman and General Electric. And even though the Super Hornet is a derivative of its F-18 predecessors, the test program is a rigorous and thorough one. Pete Pilcher is McDonnell Douglas flight test director. Uh, to us, it's a brand new airplane. Uh, you know, we have, to, we have to essentially test all the uh, same things that we did for the uh, ABCD. Uh, we have to essentially go through all of those uh, one more time, from flutter to flying qualities to performance to high angle attack to carrier suitability to weapon separation. All those things have to be done over again. Work days on a test program are long and demanding, usually beginning the night before. Maintainers and technicians prepare the aircraft and test equipment for the next day's missions. Pilots and flight test engineers meet early in the morning, two hours before takeoff, to plan the day's flights. They review test cards that specify flight routines and outline the data they need to capture. Then it's time to go fly. With the delivery of aircraft E3 in February, all seven test planes are now in the program, each one assigned a specific mission. One aircraft will conduct speed and flutter tests. Another will test G-forces and airloads. Others will conduct propulsion, high angle of attack, weapon separation, or avionics tests. Every airplane is packed with wiring and sensors to capture real-time data on how it performs. That data will either verify predicted performance or detect problems that need a fix. We have instrumentation systems in each one of the airplanes, and the instrumentation systems are really uh, small avionics systems within themselves. Uh, they, they have the capability to record information that stays on the airplane. They also have the capability to, to take information and transmit it to the ground. Uh, for each system or subsystem in the airplane, uh, the designer will have predicted, for instance, what the loads might be and will have designed his piece of the structure to those loads. So we compare the information that we gather uh, we show that these loads, for instance, are uh, below the design requirement that the engineer had. The Hornet team and the Navy are taking a new approach to the ENF test program. It's an integrated test team, with the Navy and the contractors working together to one master plan. In the past, the contractor and the Navy would conduct their testing separately. That led to duplicated effort, high cost, and a sometimes adversarial relationship. Commander Bob Wirt is the Navy's flight test director. Well, in the past, we've always worked in an oversight role, where basically we're holding the spec in our hand and looking at the contractor and going, aha, I caught you. Uh, now we're more involved with the planning and problem solving part up front. We're actually writing cards together, reviewing those flight test cards together. We jointly developed the test plans together and reviewed those things concurrently. And frankly, when it comes to flying, the scheduling is done by whose turn is it to fly today. So uh, it's paid off uh, a lot in terms of time and cost uh, to get the airplane done and completed the way we want it as the customer. P. 
Pete Pilcher says the test program has two goals. Ensure that the Super Hornet meets specification and make sure it is operationally suitable. A lot has to be accomplished to reach those goals in the next two years. Uh, 1996 was primarily a look at the airplane clean, uh, meaning no tanks, no weapons, no uh, nothing on the airplane except maybe uh, missiles on the wingtips and missiles on the fuselage. So our challenge now is to, to finish up the clean envelope expansion and then move on into storage work. We've got uh, some 32 weapons and at the end of our test program, the airplane has to be qualified to carry all these, all these weapons. This team's product is a, an airplane, the F-18EF, that's ready for OPAVAL in November 98. That's when uh, we're scheduled to be completed. Uh, about the third quarter of FY99, we'll send the airplane to OPAVAL. Uh, by the year 2000, the airplane will have its operational capability. In 2001, it'll deploy. With the Joint Strike Fighter at least 15 years away from operational capability, the Super Hornet is the cornerstone of naval aviation well into the next century. The Navy plans to buy a thousand of them through 2015. And while the ENF Super Hornet has been a model development program, no test program is without its problems and surprises. Uh, have there been surprises? Yes. Uh, and that's why we're here. We're in the test business to find out the things that don't quite work uh, as we expected. We, uh, we test, uh, and if there are problems, we analyze the problems, and then we come up with a solution, a fix, and then we go back and test again. So that's what, uh, that's what the test business is all about.